All right, perfect. Hi, everybody. I'm Andy Fernandez. I'm the Director of Product Management here at Haiku. The focus of today is on cyber resilience in the SaaS era. And I know what you're thinking. This is a focus on financial services, on financial technology, and how you can enable your organizations uh, with data today. Usually the backup, the, the DR, the ransomware recovery conversation is, has a strong IT focus. But I want to show you today why we believe cyber resilience is critical to the entire organization, not just IT, but across all the departments. But let's get to it. I know it's been a long day. I want to make sure that we all get uh, a full awareness of what's going on very quickly. I want us to get back into the time machine real quick, though. And I want us to look back 15, 20 years ago. Uh, this is something that all of us on this call are very aware of. I like to call them the good old days. The good old days was when all infrastructure and subsequent business applications were managed and running on a, on a data center on premises. What did this actually mean though in the context of cyber resilience? Well, it meant that IT had full visibility and full control. Why? Because all of the applications, including financial applications, including payroll, HR, engineering, they all sat in a data center on virtual and physical infrastructure. What that meant was IT could manage it. It was easy to secure because you were securing a castle. All you had to do was focus on prevention. And ultimately, you had very accessible data protection and backups always available with solutions that focused on those specific technologies, right? You had Veritas uh, mainframes, you had Commvault to be able to protect Windows, and you had the beams of the world to be able to protect your virtual infrastructure. All was well. It was a very straightforward world. But if we look at today's reality, before we even touch on that, as I mentioned, especially when we talk about cyber resilience today, there are some very key basic checkpoints around cyber resilience that you need to have. Because cyber resilience isn't just being able to stop an attack and say, hey, we, we've got firewalls, we've got preventative infrastructure networking, we're okay. No, cyber resilience is facing the reality that we live in today, that it's not a matter of if, but when an attack would happen. And every organization needs to have backups. You need to be able to retain your data somewhere, not only to be able to have ability to recover, but also meet compliance. You have to fulfill the three, two, one rule, right? Three copies, two media types, one off site. And ultimately, you also want to make sure that you have what I call ransomware proof copies of data to be able to recover from. This was extremely easy to do 10, 15 years ago when you had all of your applications running on premises. Where do we live today? Well, if you go back about eight, nine years ago, you started to see a pretty strong adoption of cloud infrastructure, AWS, Azure, Google Cloud. But people were using them to save on storage, to be able to store data, use it for archive storage requirements, even certain backups and DR. But all production level applications were still running on prem. What we started to see now was a full modernization of these applications. Now people are relying on their cloud services for database, for pass, for everything that they're doing from an analytics, data warehousing, and development perspective. This now means that applications that used to run on production on-prem are actually running on cloud infrastructure now, and that as a service model. And that's just the beginning. The other component is the explosion of departmental SaaS applications. What do I mean by that? Well, every single application that used to be used by a company, whether it was your HR software, your CRM, your, your uh, file storage, everything was done on-prem. It was very easy to manage. Now, in today's world, anyone with a credit card in an organization is able to spin up a new service, and now that becomes a business-critical application. If you look at things like Marketo, Adobe, Salesforce, Microsoft 365, all of these applications used to live on-prem, but now they're in the cloud. And what does that actually mean? Well, it means that cyber resilience is not as straightforward anymore. First of all, many people make the mistake of believing that because they're trusting a SaaS vendor or a cloud vendor, that it's okay, that if something happens, the cloud or SaaS vendor will help them get their data back. But the reality is that every single one of these vendors follows the shared responsibility model. And what they say is, hey, we'll keep the service available. We'll follow the, nine, uh, the five nines and give you 99.99% uptime. But if the data gets deleted, corrupted, even if there's an attack, it's your responsibility to recover. So what we have here today is we used to have this castle that was extremely easy to protect. And now you have a kingdom and you have data everywhere in disparate locations in different type of workloads. Now you may be asking, well, 
I don't really think there's any issue with it being cloud infrastructure. It should be okay. Well, the reality is that these applications, regardless of where they live, are all susceptible to the same three things. First is operational data loss. What I mean by that is accidental deletions are always going to happen in an organization. Whether somebody accidentally deleted an entire instance within AWS or a specific file, that is always going to happen. You also have logical failures, corruptions, bugs, and even rogue administrators who go and delete everything. For example, something that happens a lot is people will go and delete critical data in Microsoft 365 or Jira. And it's, and it's been proven that data loss is a fact of life regardless of where we are, especially within SaaS. But the focus of today is ransomware. Because these applications have now moved towards other departments, they're not always necessarily being run by IT. Therefore, there's probably a bigger risk from a security perspective. That's why they have been proven to be the number one tag target for these ransomware attacks. And in fact, there's a 52% success rate of that. Now, here's the third piece, and this is extremely critical, especially for financial services. Regardless of where that data is, and if you're using that application as a SaaS versus hosting it on a data center, it still falls under compliance requirements. Compliance for data governance, for data retention, and also to fulfill offsite copy requirements. These are all still critical things to see. But if you look at, for example, organizations like Atlassian Cloud, these companies, these SaaS applications, they delete their user data after 30 days, 60 days, or 90 days. When we know healthcare and financial services, you have to store your data for seven years. So it's critical to make sure that you can still recover your data, protect it from ransomware, and make sure that you can meet compliance. Now, this is being catered specifically to financial services today. There are three things that we recommend at Haiku that you have to be able to do to make sure that your business is resilient, that if or when a ransomware attack happens, you're able to protect yourself. The first thing is you have to identify the risk and vulnerabilities, especially the applications today that sit in the cloud that may necessarily not be protected. And if something happens, it is your responsibility to recover. The second is to make sure that once you've identified this gap, that you can deliver secure backup and recovery for these business critical applications. And this is what I call the last line of defense, that when an attack happens, even if everything is encrypted, you know that you have a safe, immutable air gap copy that you can recover from in case the worst thing happens within a ransomware attack. Now, the question is, this is very straightforward. This follows exactly what the NIST framework tells you to do, but easier said than done. And this is where I want to introduce Haiku, and I'm going to go through on those three key elements of identifying threats, adding backup, adding a last line of defense. How do we help? Quick history about Haiku, we are a data protection as a service organization. We have been funded by Bain Capital, Acru, Cisco, Atlassian Ventures, and Okta. We have over 3,600 customers in over 75 countries. More than 3,600 organizations all over the world trust us with their most sensitive data. This includes federal, healthcare, financial services, and we're more than happy to be able to provide you with references specific to financial services as well. But the point is, these organizations trust Haiku to protect their critical infrastructure. And this all started on-prem. But as we realize today, the majority of the risk that organizations have, especially in finance, sits within cloud infrastructure and SaaS. But first, it's visibility is the biggest problem. You cannot protect what you do not know is going on within your organization. And in fact, some of the staggering numbers that we found was that there are over 17,000 SaaS applications. The average mid-sized organization, and when I say mid-size, I'm talking 2,500 employees or below, has more than 217 SaaS applications in use across departments. Yet less than a quarter of those are actually paid for and managed by IT themselves. And this isn't even counting all of the modernized infrastructure and services that used to be on-prem that now exist within the hyperscalers as well. So most organizations, despite their most confident efforts, do not know the sprawl of SaaS applications that are going on, whether it's known IT or shadow IT. Now, the question here though is, okay, let's say that we can visualize and we have an exact inventory of all of the SaaS applications that we're using today. Can you even protect them? And the answer for the most part is no. If you look at 
the total amount of applications that are just the Americas, we're talking 17,000 SaaS applications. Within finance and financial services, let's say that there are 500 critical SaaS applications and cloud services that are used in the Fortune 500 regularly. There are actually not just less than 10, but there are only five SaaS applications that are supported today by enterprise class vendors. And I mean enterprise by those recognized by Gartner as trustworthy backup and recovery services. So what we see here is an enormous gap. Not only do we have a visibility problem, but we have an issue here where the enterprise backup vendors have not been able to catch up and be able to protect. No one can build these in a linear fashion. It is impossible. There are too many applications. Too many of them are coming out every single day. So what I want to be able to drive first now is kind of talk through how Haiku is able to solve two problems. First problem is, how do I know what's going on in my organization? How do, how do I know what's protected, what's not, how many SaaS applications? And then how do I actually protect these applications that I suddenly discover that are my responsibility to be able to protect and recover if something happens? The first thing that we've announced, and this is, I'm giving you a sneak preview of this. This is a free service that we're going to be able to give all organizations that are attending this call. It's called Artgraph. And what Artgraph is, is within seconds, leveraging your single sign-on, whether it's Azure AD or Okta, that you can visualize your entire data state in seconds. What I mean by this is being able to understand how many SaaS applications are being used by your organization today. How many cloud services are being used by your organization today? And this even extends to on-premises as well. So you have a full understanding of what are my critical applications and are they being protected or not? This is a perfect way for you to take critical steps in order to fill these gaps in protection that every single organization has today. The next bit is, well, okay, we've helped you with visualization, but how on earth are we going to build 17,000 SaaS applications? How are we gonna build backup for all of them? And the reality is that we're not. So what we realized, and this is a bit of our penicillin moment, it's we've patented and we've been a leader in data protection and backup recovery, DR, ransomware recovery. We've perfected the technology, we've stabilized it, we are built natively for every cloud infrastructure and on-prem as well. And we've already built the magic. The question is, how do we spread this magic across the world? And so what we built was something called our cloud, the world's first development platform for data protection. So instead of us having to go and build 17,000 SaaS applications, why not work with the SaaS vendors and empower them to be able to rapidly release native backup and recovery services for their SaaS application? And the way that we're doing this is in a low code framework. We're exposing our APIs. We're giving these SaaS, uh, these SaaS companies access to be able to build and access everything that we've already perfected, our policy management, our storage target management, our backups, our ability to automate and orchestrate the movement of data. These things that we've perfected, we've now opened it up and given it to these organizations to be able to build on Haiku on our cloud. Ultimately, we secure, we certify, and we publish this to a marketplace. So the way that it works is think of the critical SaaS applications that every organization attending this today uses. Let's say something like Jira, critical. Jira Cloud is important, and most organizations don't realize how much of a gap they have in data protection there. So these SaaS app companies are able to simply determine what they want to protect, leverage our APIs, leverage our framework, and in a very rapid amount of time, be able to release native purpose-built backup and recovery that includes not only automated backup policies, granular recovery, but the ability to store data off-site and meet those compliance requirements. And ultimately, they are all available on the Haiku marketplace, which we can give you access very quickly. Now, I wanna show you just the first batch of our cloud in the last couple of months, what we've been able to deliver. Just using the same methodology, we were able to release the backup and recovery natively without agents for Google Cloud SQL, for Google BigQuery, Amazon RDS, but also SaaS applications like Jira, Confluence, Salesforce, Okta, Google Workspace. 
This is just the beginning, folks. You are going to see dozens, if not hundreds, of SaaS applications continuously being approved, published, and certified by Haiku, where organizations can protect them all from the same space. Now, I want to give you an understanding, too, because you might think, well, if all of these SaaS vendors are building themselves, what kind of solutions are they actually offering? One thing that I can guarantee, and, and this is how we've built it, this is how we've engineered it, is that every single SaaS application that we protect will have three core capabilities. First, being able to automate the entire backup process. This is something that takes organizations a lot of time. Imagine having to create backups for 200 different SaaS applications. It's not going to work. So we've allowed the ability to set and forget policies. And within five minutes, you can automate the backup side. When something gets deleted, if there's an outage, if there's a ransomware attack, we provide one-click granular recovery, not only of the entire instance or object, but down even to the file level. And most importantly, from a compliance perspective, we allow you to be able to store that SaaS data off-site for as long as you need to, whether it's seven days to seven years, you can store it at any point in time for an unlimited amount of time. So that's what Haiku is all about. We've identified what we believe to be the biggest gap in cyber resilience that is today. And we're the only service, the only platform that is built to scale to protect the thousands of applications that need protecting today. Being able to manage your infrastructure on premise, your applications and database on premise, but also all of your applications and services that live within the cloud. And with that, we're able to give you one place where you can manage all of them and be able to deliver the backup, the DR, the mobility, the ransomware protection, and to make sure that you can always meet security and compliance requirements. We are the only vendor, the only service that is even built to be able to deliver this type of coverage. So in conclusion, what I wanna give you is a little bit of an insight into how we can help you today from a cyber resilience perspective. And there's three things that we discussed, right? Identifying the risk, making sure that you can prepare yourself and find filling the gaps with secure backup. The first thing that we can do is deliver our graph for free. This allows you to visualize your entire data state and identify unprotected applications. The next thing is our score. What our score is, think of it as a FICO credit score for your ransomware preparedness. Taking a look at not only what type of technology you're using, but also what kind of configuration, documentation, and behaviors you have in your organization, giving you an exact score with exact um, requirements for you to be able to improve that score. And ultimately, we give you the highest volume of SaaS applications that are natively protected today by an enterprise class backup. So it's all about making sure that you can assess your risk, prepare yourself, but ultimately protect this extremely critical data that lives in SaaS today. So with that, I want to thank you so much for your time, and we can open this up for questions, Ron.